Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Media and Entertainment Online Student Panel here at Yale SOM. My name is Stephanie Hafner. I am a career coach at the Career Development Office, also known as the CDO. And today, I'm going to be moderating a panel of wonderful second years here with me, who most recently had a summer internship in the media and entertainment industry. Um, but before we get to that, I'm gonna, before we get to asking them questions, I'll give you a quick overview of the CDO so that you know kind of what we provide and how we serve students. So as I mentioned, I'm a career coach and our office is about 20 full and half of it is student facing. So the career coaches are the ones that help students through their journey while they're here, all the way from the beginning, all the way to the end um, during their career search and journey. We serve lots of different populations, the regular MBA, the Silver Scholar Program, the GBS program, the MAM program, and are served to set up any interest or discipline. So whether or not you're, you're recruiting for m and &E, or you're recruiting for traditional you know, paths like banking or consulting, um, or even up to very niche areas like impact investing, um, certain nonprofits, ed tech, it could be everything and anything. We are set up to serve you and help you as generalist coaches. On the other side of the house, if you will, in the CDO are the employer partnership team. And they are employer facing. So every day they're working to build new relationships with employers that do not recruit at SOM, or they're here to continue to nurture and maintain and strengthen relationships that we do here, have here at SOM. Um, so overall, we are set up to basically serve students with any interest across any industry, discipline, or employer. So without further ado, now, now that you understand what the CDO does, um, I'm going to turn it over to uh, really the heart of our conversation, which is our panelists here. And I'm going to open it up with a couple of questions. Um, the first one being just a quick introduction so everybody knows what your background is. Um, Hannah, if you could start. Um, you could just say your name, what you did before coming to SOM, what you were hoping to get out of SOM, and what you did over the summer, please. Yeah. Um, so hi, everyone. I'm Hannah Stonebreaker. Um, I'm a second year, but I'm actually a fourth semester graduating in December, which is unusual, and I'll explain why. Um, before SOM, I worked for a nonprofit in Washington, D.C. called the International Women's Media Foundation. So I worked with women journalists globally to help them cover issues that typically don't make it into the mainstream media. Um, I did about a third of my time traveling mostly in East and Central Africa, running programming on the ground with journalists came to SOM to really get a broader understanding of the media industry writ large and learn some of the financial and economic skills that I uh, really ignored in my undergraduate degree on African politics. Um, and then I have done three internships. Um, my first summer, I worked as a project manager for a design firm in New York. Um, and then the reason why I'm on a weird schedule is I took a semester off last fall to do content marketing at a civic tech firm during the midterm U.S. elections. And then this past summer, I worked at KQED in San Francisco, which is the NPR local affiliate doing audience development, which is a combination of marketing and audience strategy. Fantastic. Thank you, Hannah. <laughs> Reed? Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Reeve Hardy. Um, I am maybe a little bit more of a traditional MBA student. <laughs> I'm a current second year student here at Yale SOM. Uh, before Yale, I spent about seven and a half years at Deloitte, uh, the first four and a half which were in Los Angeles, mostly serving media and tech clients, uh, mostly in an audit capacity, but a little bit of advisory work as well. Uh, then the next three years I spent in New York, really rounding out sort of my, my tool belt, um, doing M&A work for private equity clients, uh, mostly KKR, but also New Mountain Capital, and I worked on a few uh, large mergers. I worked on the Marriott Starwood deal, for instance, and then I came to Yale with the idea of pivoting back into the media and entertainment space, and particularly that intersection between media and entertainment and technology, um, using some of the skills that I gained, both from my M&A experience in New York and now my Yale MBA and my wider network connections from Yale. Okay, great. Heidi? Yeah, hi. Uh, my name is Jaime Totti, and I am actually a fourth year joint degree MFA MBA with the drama school. So um, prior, immediately prior to SOM, I was here studying for theater management in the drama school. Before that, I was uh, in New York working as a company manager for a Broadway and off-Broadway general management uh, office. Um, during my summer, this past summer, I've been working as the managing director of the Yale Cabaret, which is the student-run theater here on campus.
campus, so I'm sort of getting a very hands-on, direct approach in what it is to do theater management uh, in a nonprofit setting. Okay, great. Thank you for the introductions. Very, very interesting and diverse backgrounds here, so it's fantastic. Um, can you talk a little bit about um, what you've done to engage in SOM, specifically any clubs that you're a part of, um, any classes that are interesting to you, or any projects or professors that you might be working with during your time at SOM? I can start. Um, <laughs> So I am a member of the Media and Entertainment Club, but haven't been heavily involved because I also am very niche in digital news media specifically. Um, I have been very involved in Design and Innovation Club, um, Tech Club, Marketing Club, and then I was a leader for a community called Voices, where we do student storytelling at SOM once a week. Um, it's a no tech space, no notes. People get up and tell their own stories however they want for 12 minutes, um, much like the moth, if you're familiar. Um, and then on the academic side, um, I've taken a number of courses really in like the digital space, um, and then also kind of looking at competitive strategy, corporate strategy, um, where we do typically lately have one or two cases that are media specific, which is very fun. Um, we did like evaluation of the Tribune company and corporate finance. Um, in digital strategy, we're talking about the New York Times transition to paywall in a couple weeks. Um, so it is nice that you can kind of get that media experience within other classes that are broadly across different topics. Um, the other thing I did is I did an independent study with Jennifer McFadden, who's the associate director of the program on entrepreneurship at SOM. And she actually worked for the New York Times after she graduated SOM and then started the company Skillshare. Um, and I did an independent study on digital news media status of like, where are the new entrants? Um, what are they doing now? Who are the players? Um, and it was actually really fun because in my research, I called that someone would acquire Refinery29 and then it happened two weeks ago and it was like, <laughs> greatest accomplishment ever. So do independent studies. They're great. Yeah, that awesome. sounds phenomenal. Yeah, um, I'm not doing nearly as many cool things. I will say, uh, I'm in a, of the class right yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. I'm heavily involved in a number of different uh, verticals here at school. One of which is student government, and as Hannah mentioned, I'm the class president, uh, which isn't really like media and entertainment adjacent. But I will say, like, you get a lot of practice public speaking and sort of leading wide organizations of people with different functional and industry uh, experience, which I think is great. Um, I'm also in the media and entertainment club, but I'm mostly a member. And I will say, like, that's a great way to, one, build connections, both with firms kind of coming in to speak, uh, and also with fellow students who have either in industry experience from pre-MBA, uh, from a pre-MBA life, or are interested in joining the space from a different functional perspective. Um, so for me, like, that was phenomenal. I would recommend that everybody go on uh, the Media and Entertainment Trek, which there's one in New York, and there's one in Los Angeles. I particularly went on the one back to LA uh, last January, which was great. I got to network with a number of different firms, both from an internship perspective and from a potential full-time perspective. Um, and I didn't really get to talk about it before, but I spent my summer at Comcast Corporate Strategy partly because of, one, the skill sets I was gaining in some of the classes that Hannah mentioned. Now I'm in digital strategy, for example, and like we're working on a case on MoviePass. Um, and then also just sort of my, my additional sort of networking from going on these different tracks and visiting these, visiting these companies along the way, I was able to talk about sort of my experience at Warner and NBC Universal. And then once it came down to sort of applying for and interviewing with Comcast, it was a very easy decision um, to join the corporate strategy team to sort of get an overall holistic view and really um, sort of add some additional foundational experience in the media and entertainment space. So now that I look, at, I look ahead towards full-time opportunities, I now have that on my resume and can sort of demonstrate my industry interest and future expertise. Awesome. Yeah, uh, I mean, I don't have a whole lot to add to all that. I also am a member of the Media and Entertainment Club. Um, and where Reeve went to the LA Trek, I went to the New York Trek. Um, my journey through SOM has been, you know, I'm coming from a very, from a very niche uh, 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 perspective, and I'm, I intend to go back into theater. It's what I've sort of spent so much of my time doing. Um, but uh, you know, I want to sort of bring a lot of the skills that I've been picking up here to that industry because it, it is it operates in a lot of ways in a very old fashioned way. 
Um, so being a part of the Media and Entertainment Club has given me an opportunity to really connect with a wide variety of different perspectives on where the entertainment space is going, how that plays with live entertainment versus digital versus uh, uh, broadcast and, and where all of them are starting to sort of mix together. So like the trek to New York going to uh, Viacom in particular was very, very interesting because they had a they had the they had just finished producing uh, SpongeBob SquarePants on Broadway <laughs> and they were shifting and they were sort of like figuring out how to how to then leverage that into like their next space. Um, so all of that was was pretty fantastic. Beyond that, I also have been taking a lot of uh, strategy classes here at SOM: corporate uh, uh, competitive strategy, strategic management of nonprofits, pricing strategy, um, in an effort to again sort of bring a lot of that into the field that I come from. Um, and then, and then aside from that, it's been connecting. I also am involved in student government here, uh, and in student government both in SOM and also as part of the wider university. I sit on the Graduate and Professional Student Senate. Um, so I connect with students from all around the university to work on issues that, that affect all of us together. And so that's just been another sort of one of the greatest opportunities that I've had at SOM and at Yale in general to connect with people all around the university and, 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 and really sort of break the silos between all of our schools, which has been great. Awesome. Do you guys? Um, you guys went to the Trex, LA, and New York. Do you happen to remember the t the companies that were you visited? Just to give the audience a sense of sure. where we go. Yeah. Um, so LA, we did a bunch from from like Los Angeles Lakers to Warner Brothers, uh, NBC Universal, uh, Netflix, Hulu. Mm -hmm. uh, I did a separate thing where I got to connect with a Yale alum at Disney, um, sort of, and I think that kind of just goes back to uh, Jaime's point on sort of the wider Yale University and really leveraging all of the alumni. Like, the people are phenomenal here at Yale, like whether they went to SOM or they went to another graduate school affiliate or they were an undergrad here at Yale College, they're always willing to sort of speak to their experiences and give advice to like students looking to break into the industry and flag your resume and sort of help you navigate through the process. Um, and so I would sort of definitely, um, advise on on keeping up those connections and and really leveraging them into your future yes yeah, I, I have to second that um so the the m e trek to new york is actually specifically just for viacom yeah um but uh but beyond that i also have been in touch with a whole bunch of different uh som alumni and 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 alumni from other programs around the university who are working in new york in media and entertainment or in arts and culture and have been like willing without even a second thought to just sit down and like have a chat with me about what what the industry is looking like and what's out there. So awesome. and also two yeah. other movie studios yeah. we went to. We went to Paramount uh, and we went to Lionsgate when we were in LA. Awesome. Then Thank I you. didn't do the media and entertainment tracks because I'm so digitally focused. I went on the tech track in the Bay Area. So visited Facebook, Google, Dropbox, Salesforce, um, 500 startups, which is a VC fund, um, and a number of other tech companies out there. Yeah, I say that because it's just an awesome way for you to get to know employers better, have an opportunity to learn about the organization and the types of roles that people play. For example, this year we're headed to Disney Theatrical and Sirius and Pandora is on the list as well. So um, wide variety. Um, you guys talked a little bit about like professors that you worked with and classes that you've taken here at Yale. Are there some classes um, outside of the walls of SOM, but at Yale, that you've taken advantage of? I'm sure you have a lot. <laughs> Why don't I have you start first? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So um, as I said, the first two years of my of my time here were all in the drama school in their theater management program. And that is that program is specifically um, like the theater management, or the Yale School of Drama is a conservatory program. So everybody who teaches in it is a practicing uh, theater practitioner. So in theater management, they are, you know, this is consultants who are out there in the the field doing the work or, or raising money or you know managing other organizations anyway um, that being said the some of the classes over there that I took I took a fantastic uh, 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 strategic planning class uh, with a fellow named Greg Kandel over at the drama school he also taught a great governance class so just working with with a, with a nonprofit board that was really uh, phenomenal and interesting I know a number of people at SOM now, who are taking a class that I took a couple of years ago in commercial producing with uh, a producer named Joey Parnes, who, a producer and general manager, he most recent, I think his biggest show that he did was uh, A Gentleman's Guide to Love and Murder, which won the Tony in 2013. Uh, and so he comes in and he literally like, he will walk you through the entire process of his producing that show and every choice that he made across the whole time there. And he'll you know, break out the, the original budgets that he was working with and the operating documents that he got all of his investors on. 
Uh, it's a really, it's a tremendous opportunity to sit in a very small space with somebody who has a tremendous amount of experience and is just willing to share all of it with you. Amazing. Um, I can't comment on any classes I've taken outside of Yale SOM yet, but I will say into my spring semester, I'm looking at a number of different classes, either at Yale Drama School or actually the law school, uh, particularly with an eye on intellectual property. Uh, you know, if I'm going to be managing a company in the media and entertainment technology space, I want to better understand uh, the legal parameters that kind of go around with building competitive moats um, and how some of those licenses work. Um, the other thing I'll say, which Jaime just reminded me of, is it's not really a course outside of Yale SOM and it's not, of course, inside of Yale SOM either, is the Yale Center for Customer Insights, the YCCI program, which is just another way to take credits, very sort of similar to doing an independent study. Um, what it is is companies come in sort of with potential consulting projects that they're looking for top tier MBAs to help them work on, uh, usually with a focus on developing some sort of insight into their customer base, how to improve their operations to, to reach those customers. And one of this uh, this semester's projects is with Viacom. Um, so there's a number of different media and entertainment companies and different ways to get in, get involved with them um, that don't, that maybe like normally, I don't know, you wouldn't see as like a part of a traditional uh, class structure. It varies semester over semester, but a number of media entertainment companies will participate yeah. in that. Yeah, I'll say one of the reasons I picked Yale is for the access to the classes outside of SOM as well as within. And then I've discovered that while I've been here, there's so many things that I want to do at SOM that I've actually been like very stingy with my time for outside. Um, but some of my favorite courses have been ones that are cross-listed across a number of different schools. And so I took a class called Innovation in Government and Society with Eric Braverman, who used to lead the Clinton Foundation um, and now leads Eric Schmidt's Venture Philanthropy Org. And that course of 24 students had graduate students from six different schools around Yale. Mm -hmm. So it's like just incredibly interdisciplinary. You're talking about challenges that society is facing and different ways to solve them. And I specifically did a project with three other students there on the future of journalism and what that looks like. Fantastic. Wow, that's really interesting how broad the number of classes that you <laughs> took are. Um, so I'm pulling from a number of questions that are um, sourced from students that are currently on the panel. So feel free to enter your questions now and we will get to them if we can. Um, one of the questions that we have is what kind of support and resources does SOM have to support someone who doesn't come from the m and &E background? As you know, there's a lot of doctors, lawyers, engineers, people that are looking to pivot into um, business school. And specifically for m and &E, what did you find helpful? I would just say, I think, again, sort of the existing student base, um, alumni, there are CDO, like there are a number of different either people kind of coming to campus willing to speak about their experiences. And actually, I, I think it's a bit of a feather in your cap not to potentially have any experience prior. Like, I'll just speak for me personally, coming from Deloitte, I feel like it honestly gave me a leg up in recruiting because I had something different to bring to the table. Um, I had a different set of expertise, but I was willing to, I was able to sort of demonstrate my industry interest uh, through the number of things that I was getting involved with on campus and really sort of like double down. So I don't, I don't think there's any, any potential issue with anybody coming from honestly any different background. You can get all the resources are here to catch you up to speed on things that are happening within the industry. You can do reading on your own. You can do independent studies. You can speak to um, fellow students or members of CDO or professors. Um, and I think honestly, it kind of if if you want to transition into the into the industry, any expertise you have or different perspective could really like benefit you as you sort of like look to a competitive recruiting process. Yeah, I'll add, um, I mean, I think the alumni network is one of the major ones for sure of just it gives you access to thousands of people who work in different companies who will answer your email and talk to you about their experience. Um, the CDO for helping you position yourself career-wise. Stephanie has looked at my resume <laughs> so many times to help me kind of craft for each sector within media what's best. The other thing that I think hasn't been mentioned is we do have a pretty robust executive in residence program. And like right now, for example, we have Laura Walker, who's the former CEO of New York Public Radio. So for me, that's very applicable. Um, Seth Farmer, who's the former um, CMO of Spotify, who then has also done consulting for companies like the New York Times. Um, and these are people that they have office hours at Yale once or twice a week. It is their job to sit down with you, talk about your interests, talk about your career, and then go from there. Um, and that's been incredible. Incredibly valuable. Cool. Okay. 
So a question, uh, just think about um, prior to SOM and thinking about the application to thinking about business school, how did you determine that the timing was right for you to pursue an MBA in your career? What were some of those indicators that made you think, okay, this is the time? Reeve, I see you smiling. Yeah, I, I, take that? You I, <laughs> yeah. I maybe I definitely had reached a point in my career. So I was about seven and a half years into my Deloitte career. I was sort of looking at, okay, I could be a senior manager at this point. Um, and I had sort of found like what are the things that make me happy? And it was just, it was very, it was obvious to me that as I was sort of looking ahead, I was, I was networking with people in roles that I wanted to be in. They frequently told me, hey, we're looking for people with MBAs from top tier schools. So it, it really became obvious that, okay, I am now, I was, I guess, 28 at the time um, and looking ahead to my future career and saying, if I want to get an MBA from a top tier university, I should do that now. I'm at sort of a crossroads in my career. It can really help me make a pivot into um, a different industry and using some of my existing skill sets, but also build out new skill sets that can help me sort of change functions as well. As I look to potentially run a media and entertainment division or business, I need to develop additional skills as an operator. Um, and the MBA was really the best way to do that for me. Yeah, I agree. I felt like I was um, hitting I had kind of maxed out the learning that I wanted from the position that I was in, and I wanted to learn a lot and accelerate my career as quickly as possible. Um, and with having a pretty big gap in my knowledge around um, really industry understanding from the financial perspective, I also wanted to know how to be a really intentional manager, and the place where I could combine learning both those things in a quick, focused way was an MBA program. Um, and then Yale, really fit into that with having the most socially focused program and um, a really broad understanding of what you could do with like business. Okay, fantastic. Um, in terms of summer internships, maybe I can start with you, Jaime, since yours was, you're a double and you, your summer internship was pretty much set um, by your program. Could you, tell, could you guys tell me about your summer internships, what you did over the summer? Um, and uh, if, if, if your, some of your first year classes applied, please tell us what skills you actually utilized from your first year in your summer internship. So I know, Jaime, it's a little bit different. Um, and then also, what are your plans now post-MBA, which is coming up in six or so months. Um, let us know what you're thinking in terms of the future. Yeah. So uh, yeah, as you mentioned, my, my, my path has been a little bit different. Um, so in my program at the School of Drama, we're all assigned work work assignments that we do over the course of our year, and that's a part of, uh, that's a part of our education, right? It's a conservatory, so we have to actually practice the, the work that we're learning. Uh, I was assigned to run the Yale Cabaret, which is the student-run theater here, um, and I'm the managing director there. So over the summer, it was all preparing for, I'm gonna be doing this all year, I have been doing this all year, and will continue. Over the summer, it was all preparing for the, for the upcoming season. And I actually used a ton of things that I learned oh. at Yale SOM uh, during all of that. Everything from the work that we did in groups and teams, in managing groups and teams, which is like the first class that you take. You do it's a week long uh, module that you do with your with your learning team right at the beginning of the year, um, and it's all about how do you build that group dynamic, and then you build off of that, and you build off of those learnings in uh, power and politics and a number of other classes over the course of the year. Um, I had to use that to build a, a team of the uh, the my counterpart, the artistic leadership at the cabaret, who uh, were chosen by a different group of people who chose me. So we're sort of this arranged marriage, and I had to figure, and I'm the one who is like assigned to the job, so I had to figure out how to build that team and make that work. Um, I also had to do a lot of thinking about the competitive strategy of the cabaret. Where do we fit in in the landscape of things that you can do at Yale, and how can we price and promote ourselves to make that something that people actually want to go to. So it was a lot of that work all through the summer, um, which continues into the year. And I'm working like 50 hours a week over there anyway. So it's been great. Yeah, you don't sleep at all, though. <laughs> I do. I do, actually. I sleep quite a bit. That's great. I've learned, how to, I've learned about self-care in my time in grad school. <laughs> Very true. Very, Very important. important. Very important. Um, yeah, it's, it's excellent. I will add similarly, so I was at Comcast and Corporate Strategy, as I mentioned, um, which is sort of like an internal consulting related uh, position. You get great access to executive leadership and basically you're working on whatever is 
uh, very present in the minds of the executives from around the different divisions at Comcast. Um, and it just so happened that they were just going through the acquisition of Sky. Uh, my boss's boss basically got tapped to be the next COO of Sky Europe. So within a week or two of me moving there, or me moving to Philadelphia and starting my internship, he moves to Munich. Um, and he's looking at me and the a director who sits in London um, to help support him in sort of growing the business and looking at sort of different, what does the competitive landscape look like? What does a regulatory environment look like in different uh, European markets? Um, I was particularly focused on Italy, Germany, Sweden. Uh, and as far as classes go, you know, we're working again in a very virtual team in a very global environment. So there's a global virtual team course here at Yale, which you have to take to like really prepare you for working in these international um, digital uh, team atmospheres, which can be very challenging uh, for those of us who hadn't done it before. Um, so that was one. And then sort of from an assessment standpoint, you know, I was kind of reading a lot of financial analysis reports, um, a lot of market reports, and sort of putting together synthesized information for him. So that in involved like a number of different things. It involved uh, the key components from our competitor class, economics, uh, sourcing and managing funds, accounting, and especially executive, where we sort of, it's the capstone uh, class of the core, where you sort of put all of those together um, in sort of like helping executives like deliver and communicate, you know, headline reports that really like synthesize the most important nuggets of information to help go and make a decision on a specific case. And I'll just say it happened to be that like one of the cases we did in executive was related to an Italian utility company called Enel. And of course, wouldn't you know it, like one of the first things that I realized is that Enel and the government have sort of this joint venture into the broadband space in Italy. And we're sitting around the table, I'm like, oh yeah, like Enel, like <laughs> the major Italian utility company. And like people like look like over at me and I'm like, how do you know that? And it was just like, <laughs> Executive, you know, executive class at Yale. And it's just, <laughs> honestly, it's just such an international school that you get exposed to a number of things that you wouldn't elsewhere. And you, you never sort of know how these things are going to play a role in your future career until you're sitting in the room with people and just and applying those learnings. Yeah, great. Yeah, for me, a lot of the work I did in my um, past two internships were around content marketing, customer strategy, audience strategy, um, and general competitive strategy as well. Like, what makes someone read this news organization versus another organization? What are the behaviors that relate to that? And then what are the actual economics of um, making that viable long term? So largely, a lot of our courses around competition, economics, um, competitor, and customer, which is our like, baseline marketing um, class that you take in the core. Great. Could you guys talk a little bit about recruiting and your process in doing that for the summer as well as now for full time? Um, the question is, is, does it mostly take place on campus? And I can answer that right away, that it, it does not. It's not structured like baking or consulting. A lot of it will um, involve networking. And the great news is, is we have a fantastic network. And as many of you mentioned, the SOM as well as the broader Yale community are super supportive. Um, but can you just talk about your own experience in recruiting and what that's been like? You want to start? Sure. Okay. Um, yeah. So um, I know, so in, in my field, we have been, I didn't have to recruit for the summer, but I am certainly looking now. And uh, we don't, it's a lot of just-in-time hiring in the field that I'm going to be going back into. Um, and actually, in a lot of m and &E is a lot of like very, very late recruiting process, which is something that we were warned about at the beginning of the year last year, I remember as well. Yeah. It can be nerve-wracking, that. Uh, <laughs> but you, but but the the advantage of having this alumni network has yeah. been such it's been such a huge thing you know getting I went over the summer I took the time and I went and I met people in New York and and people introduced me to more people you know I met with a, another SOM joint degree alum who's currently at Disney Theatrical and he introduced me to another person uh, working in the field in New York as well and so like being able to build that network with people who who know exactly what the recruiting process is and how how important networking is and who like want to help fellow SOMers succeed, fellow Yaleys succeed. It's like, it's it's the the tool that uh, that I've been particularly relying on. Yep. Yeah, I will say it's a little bit later for media entertainment as Jaime alluded to, but I actually think that it, again, works in your favor almost because 
you can sort of do other things along the way. Um, so we touched on whether or not there's you know on campus recruiting here. I would say that there kind of is because like we had like Activision Blizzard. Um, you know I'm working on getting Comcast to come here this year. Uh, but then we you know an Imagineer from Disney is here on campus. You can build relationships with a number of different companies here on campus. You can also do it through LinkedIn, through emailing uh, different alumni um, during the fall. You can build out different skill sets to so, like practice your behavioral and like maybe learn to case which honestly for my interviews came in very handy if you're doing corporate strategy or consulting relating uh, related recruiting learning some some sort of, or sorry uh, learning how to build sort of frameworks and kind of go through that like more traditional casing uh, interview practice can be great and having like a few extra months at the front end to work on some of those things or explore other opportunities uh, I mentioned I was interested in both like media and tech and sort of the center of that Venn diagram which is why I ended up going with Comcast which is one of the first offers that I got and they happen to be a little bit on the earlier mover side uh, so interviews were roughly in January with an offer that sort of expired at the end of February but then and you know, even after that, I there were kind of offers to in, to interview coming in later um, in March, April, May, and a number of my fellow colleagues were were getting different offers at that point. Um, so it, it's it's truncated, um, but it's a long process that offers you a number of different opportunities to prepare um, and go for some truly incredible uh, internship opportunities if you're kind of willing to wait for them to kind of come along. Yeah, the waiting game is real. Um, <laughs> my official internship offer for last summer was in my hands June 1st. Um, so one of the major things is don't panic. <laughs> um, like consulting and banking offers go out really early, and that's just not true in media. Their budgets are not set that early. They don't know what roles they're going to want. Um, and as we've said, it gives you time to talk to a ton of people and not get locked into anything. So really try your hardest to view it as a positive instead of a stress negative. Um, and then I'll say, someone said to me before I came to school that like you're going to have to be more entrepreneurial about your recruitment process. And I think that's true. Like at the end of the day, when you're going to something that's a little more niche, but at the same time, incredibly varied, just represented by the three of us on this panel, um, you have a path that's yours alone and no one else can give you boxes to check. Um, and unfortunately, you're going to see people around you at school who may have more of that clear trajectory in front of them. And you're like, I'm talking to a ton of people. I don't know where it's going. Like, that's really stressful. Um, but trying as hard as you can to focus on, like, who are the people that you're talking to that really excite you? Yeah. yeah. Who else are they working with? Um, what are, who are their competitors? Like, go follow those people. Um, and then I'd say, like, our, particularly the SOM alumni who are in the media space are incredibly generous and amazing with their time and really performing at incredibly high levels in the companies that they're in, yep. which is just a great path to blaze for you. Um, and then also looking like if, if you feel like there's stuff happening on campus that are at least going to tell you about skills that you maybe would have to succeed in media, like go to those company presentations, learn what they're looking for and how you can package yourself in a similar way for a media company that, you know, is out on the West Coast and isn't necessarily trekking to New Haven to come recruit. Mm -hmm. And that's a good point, Reva. I should correct myself. The question was, do most, does most m and &E recruiting take place on campus? And the answer is no yeah. to that. But there is on campus <laughs> recruiting that does take place on campus. Most of it does not, but it, it certainly does. We do work really hard to get those employers to come to campus and have connections with them. We have some really great ones. So I, I just want to correct that, um, that, that certainly there are employers that connect with SOM, specifically in m and &E. Um, the other thing on yeah. that note is particularly if you're interested in New York, which is such a huge yeah. media market, yeah. we are very close. It is right super there. easy to go every Friday if you want and have a bunch of coffee chats. Like totally, totally doable. People do it and you can meet incredible people that way. That's a great for it. Oh, keep and I was going. just going to add that even if they're not based in New York or not on the East Coast, like we had a, a few West Coast firms like do conferences into these like amazing classrooms that we have uh, here on Yale's campus. So you're able to interact with them real time and, and do company presentation. So I can think of Activision, Blizzard, and Riot Games. Both did uh, real-time live conferences uh, and interview, interviews, but like um, more of just like workshop recruiting events here on campus. Mm -hmm. And that leads in perfectly kind of the co comparison to New York and LA markets. Um, we, one of the questions that we have is, have you enjoyed living in New Haven? Um, and in your opinion, what are the advantages of getting an MBA in a smaller city compared to a larger city like New York or LA? 
Yeah, so I will say, New Haven, I think you have to be a little bit prepared for the New Haven winter. Right now, it's gorgeous <laughs> outside, which is amazing. Uh, From Chicago, the winter here is sad. It's not real winter. Okay, it's not compared to Chicago. So. <laughs> <laughs> or to L.A. when I was living in L.A. On the West Coast. Yeah, my, my blood got very thin while I was there. Um, and yeah, so I think you have to sort of be prepared for a little bit of, uh, a little bit of cold weather in the winter that I think, you know, it, it affects sort of your life here, whether or not, I don't know, if that could be something that people care about. But you did touch on something that's really important for me as sort of I was looking at different MBA programs, uh, the size of the program, and then sort of where it is located in related to a major metropolitan area that I could potentially work in. I didn't want something in the city because I was worried that there were going to be a lot of distractions. I had lived in New York like right before this. I didn't want to be tempted to sort of just go back to my previous friendships and relationships that I had built. Um, I really sort of wanted to be a little bit more insular, a little bit more isolated to really build deep relationships with the few students who are incredible and who are here uh, at Yale right now with me. And whether they're in SOM or the wider Yale University, I wanted to sort of be forced uh, into a, a more interactive to help build those deep relationships and a more interactive community, uh, but I also wanted to be within sort of within striking distance, I would call it, of like a major of a major metropolitan area, so that if coffee chats or you know certain networking opportunities came up, I could you know at the drop of a hat really just hop on the train, be down in New York in a couple of hours. Um, so it's close enough that it can really benefit me, and we get some incredible speakers here, um, not just in media entertainment, but like you think about like Hillary Clinton, just like people who are just happen to be in New York and are like, yeah, I'm, I'm willing to kind of come up to New Haven because it's relatively close. Um, and I think New Haven's geographical location really, really helps it in that regard. Yeah, we're only two hours outside of New York City, and it's on like the commuter rail that just one end is New Haven, the other end is Grand Central. You, two hours later, you're in the middle of the city. So um, I have not. I'm I'm from New York, and and I I love New York very very much, and and I don't feel far away from home at all here. Right, like I go down as often as I can. Um, and New Haven is itself a wonderful place. Yeah. I mean. Uh, uh, yeah, all right. We, it, it, winter happens here. It's preceded <laughs> with this gorgeous New England fall, which right now I'm like obsessed with. It's beautiful. <laughs> I went out this weekend to like a, a brewery a few, like an hour away, and it was just unbelievably gorgeous. Yeah. The colors out here. That New England fall is like a real thing. Yes. Um, Quite a hike, sleeping giant, like this weekend. Oh really my goodness. Yeah. Uh, and then the city itself is is you know Yale has a tremendous amount of uh, amount to offer. Um, SOM, you'll hear this in all of the admissions materials. SOM is so very well connected to Yale University. You can really get out and see and do a lot of the things here. But then also like out in the community as well, the restaurants that are around here, the art spaces that are around here. Um, I just saw a fantastic show over at the Long Wharf Theater, which has nothing to do with Yale, uh, but is over like like 10 minutes from here and is just a wonderful, wonderful place. So New Haven's a, a really lovely city to live in. It is a lot quieter than a big city like New York. And that takes like a minute of getting used to, but it gives you the opportunity to focus on the community that you're building here. And then, like Reeve was saying, you're so close to the city that you just get down there and do any of the professional development work that you need to do or, you know, go have a night on the town. And I just, I do want to jump in, like, on your point on arts and culture, I didn't mention it, but, like, I'm going to see a uh, play at the Yale Rep tonight. Like, there's just, there are a ton of, like, different opportunities to kind of, like, get involved with, like, things that are going around on campus. Um, and, like, the, the museums here are great. Every time my parents visit, like, we always go to the Yale Art Museum or the Brit yeah. or Yale Museum of British Art, too. Mm -hmm. um, and, I don't know, they're gorgeous. Yeah, I think just, I mean, to echo, it's the perfect balance between it is a community where people are here, they stay here for the weekend and they spend time with their classmates. You get to know your classmates really well. So like even like when I go to New York for a Friday for meetings, I come back to have dinner and go to an event with classmates. Like I don't necessarily want to stay um, in New York because I want to be back here and take part in all the Yale activities. We have amazing cultural institutions, just from the backing of Yale as an institution. Um, and the food is really good. We have really good ethnic food, like yeah. really good. Like what's your favorite ethnic? Oh, there's a Moroccan place mm -hmm. that I love. Um, there is Mia's Sushi, which is all sushi made from like endangered or not from, from uh, opposite of endangered right, species. Right. Clearly I don't go to FES. Um, <laughs> in Dutch, uh, in, um, Species oh, that are like too present. Invasive. <laughs> Invasive. There you go. <laughs> Not my skill set. Um, but the food's great. <laughs> yeah. 
Yes. Yeah. I'm sucking up. And the pizza. Obviously, the you'll pizza. hear a lot about New Haven pizza. Haven the pizza's pizza. real good. <laughs> yeah, of course. You can't, you can't not mention Peppy. So clearly, yeah. you guys all love New Haven and love you, which is fantastic. Um, one of the questions we have is about um, examples of backgrounds um, and future career plans of your classmates in the m and &E space. And I had just pulled a little bit of data before coming to this panel just to give you a sense for how it can really vary across m and &E. Um, so in the last couple of years, I'll just mention some of the firms that some of our alums have ended up in. Um, it could range from Top Golf, Riot Games, Google, in the music partnerships business in YouTube and Google Play, Vox Media, American Ballet, um, Viacom, Riot Games, IMAX, MTV, CNN, Thomson Reuters, the NBA, the National Basketball Association, Walt Disney, um, so it can really take form in so many, so many different areas. Can you guys talk a little bit about your friends, what you've heard, yeah. where you've seen people go? Yeah, um, one of the, uh, I have two other, like the little media team from um, my cohort that I started with. One worked in music production in Korea prior to SOM. She interned at Spotify and now she's at- Columbia Records. Columbia Records. I couldn't remember if it was Columbia or Sony. <laughs> Columbia Records. Um, another one worked for MTV before SOM and she's at Twitter right now working on their like insights vertical looking at media and politics in particular. Um, so those are like very different paths, both coming from a media background who knew that they wanted to go into media and stay there. Another one of my peers worked, he was one of the leads of the Media and Entertainment Club. He worked for the International Olympic Committee before SOM, and he wanted to really broaden his skill set. So he works um, for one of the three major um, big consulting firms in Boston now. Cool. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> I know many people at sort of all of those institutions. The other two, I will say as yeah. well, uh, two of my best friends. One of them, um, come, she was like a director at Lucasfilm and ILM, and now she's here uh, in my class at ELSM. She's one of the leaders of the Media Entertainment Club. And then another one, uh, he was in ES he was at ESPN in a financial role, and now he, he this summer he was at the NBA as a summer associate. And I, I don't exactly know if he's going back yet. I think he's still kind of like trying to figure out and sort of waiting for full-time offers to kind of come through, but he's had some really cool sports-related media work. Cool. Yeah, I, I know two former ballet dancers in our class, uh, one of whom is my counterpart from the drama school joint degree, and the other one also, they, they had, the two of them had danced together when they were much younger in the America, uh, in the New York City Ballet, uh, and were members of the New York City Ballet, and then one went off to LA and was a modern dancer for a time, and so both of them are here now, and both of them are planning to continue in the M&E space, though I cannot recall what one of them did over the summer. Okay, cool. <laughs> very, very interesting and very diverse. All over the place. Um, so it's fantastic. So we're running up against time. I'm just gonna ask the last question for our panelists, and thank you so much for answering with such honesty and authenticity. Um, can you give uh, people that are on the panel today a quick word of advice um, what, as they're preparing to apply? Is there anything that you would just say is like your last word of wisdom? Two things. All right. <laughs> the first is think about why business school is good for you. Don't necessarily think about what you think they want to hear from you. Because um, first of all, I think Yale is a school where that's not who they're looking for. Like we don't want the cookie cutter candidates and our class is way more fun by having a mix of people who have very traditional backgrounds and people who really truly don't. Um, and it makes it just intellectually and socially awesome. Um, and the other reason for that is like, know why you're doing this. Like sometimes business school is hard, it's challenging. You're in a really rigorous environment um, that your time is demanded in all sorts of different ways. Um, so know why you're doing it and then tell Gail that that's why you're doing it. Um, and if they think it's a good fit, then things will work out well. The other thing, my favorite question to ask, to pe ask people at business schools before I came was what was the most surprising thing to them? Because I think we all have expectations for everywhere that we're going and you wanna know what was totally different from what you thought it would be and how will that be for you? Yeah, that's very well said. Uh, I think the internal reflection piece is very important. 
My thing, just to add to that, would be go visit the school, honestly, like, or reach out to people who either go there now or went there before and get a sense of the community and, and really like figure out if it's gonna be the right fit for you, as you sort of mentioned. Um, and I think if you come to Yale, like you'll immediately realize, one, it's a super diverse community, and two, uh, just everybody's so uh, open and willing to like sacrifice their time and give back to the wider community that everybody would love to speak with you um, and, and offer their thoughts and advice and, and sort of explain how their experience has been unique here at Yale. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't have a whole lot to add. Everything that Hannah said was exactly what I was thinking. Uh, having a having a clear sense, you know, it having a clear sense of not only sort of why you want to go to business school, but specifically what you want to get out of it for you that's like part of your journey and your story. And like, we don't know where our journey is going, particularly when we're applying to, to a place like a business school where there's so many opportunities to pivot. Um, but you know everything that's led up to this point and you can look ahead with that and, and sort of like set into this path with intention. And when you communicate that intention in your application and in your writings, it, it shows through really, really well. Um, and that's, like Hannah said, that's the kind of thing that, that Yale wants too. <laughs> All right, fantastic. So Jaime, Reeve, and Hannah, thank you so much for your time. I also want to thank you for your time and joining us. I've certainly learned a lot from their experiences, and I hope you do too. And we are looking forward to hopefully meeting some of you here at SOM. Thank you for your time. Have a great day.